It looks like another person has come forward via a Twitter account just to talk about how Phil was messaging him when he was a minor. Hey guys, it's Marab Morali. Hope you guys are all doing well today. Back at again with another video. If you have not subscribed, guys, click that button. It is daily and consistent content. Subscribe to the channel, inject it. It's just one click. Now, um, somebody has tweeted and it's been caught by quite a few blogs, guys, about what um, Phil had said to somebody who was a minor. I want to just quickly find it. So this young person says, um, take me, he send, sends an image to um, Philip and he says, take me to prom, um, Phil. And you know, when you're going to pre your prom, you are 15 turning 16 and you're going to your final prom ad, or you know, it could be a sixth form prom, could be either or, but most likely the prom is when you are um, in like year 10, 11 um, going on. And then he replies saying, okay, I will take you. And then the guy said, how has Philip just agreed to take me to prom? And then he says, what could have been? And I'm like, yeah, what could have been? I mean, the fact that we've seen so many other messages from so many other um, peep miners on Snapchat at the time saying that he was messaging them and then so many follows on Twitter as well. And then we have this Matthew individual and then we have him going to dinner with somebody else. There is a pattern here, very much so. And... Maybe I'm crazy, but if somebody who is 15 or whatever isn't DMing me saying, take me to your prom, I'm just be like, ew, like, no, I'm so sorry. I'm glad that you support my channel, but I do not want to take you to prom because you're very much a minor. It's just very odd. I don't need to be there. It doesn't make any sense. So for him just to be having these casual conversations with these boys, that's how grooming can begin. It begins at a place where, you know, you find somebody who's of that age range, you speak to them in a friendly manner, you have a normal conversation, everything seems fine, it seems like banter to you, jokes to you, you're very naive at that age, and yet there's a whole devised plan about what they would want to do with you or see with you, you know, which is what I believe happened with this young individual, and which is why it turns so left for Phil and Math with Matthew, which is why... You know, he confronted him at the NTAs, got kicked out or whatever, because for him, he was very naive. He was going on these dinner dates, you know, he was going on these restaurant dates. He was wanting to become a presenter, whereas Phil had lust for this individual. And that is where the grooming begins. I feel like grooming is very common. It happens a lot on both sides of the coin. A lot of women can groom young people and men as well. So I think that is a, it's a very serious conversation. And yet again, there's just another person via Twitter who's come out to say, look, we've been messaging when I was a minor. Look, you know, a prom situation happened. And, you know, I was 15, 16, and he agreed to take me to prom. Now, that can be an innocent message as well, if we look at it from the different side of the coin. But with everything else that has been interlinked um, with this man, it is, to me, troubling, very scary that people would do stuff like that. Um, because, you know, there is, there's, a, there's just a different mode. Why aren't we seeing multiple other people who are in their 30s and 40s and 50s saying, oh, I spoke to Phil on Snapchat. Oh, I spoke to Phil on XYZ. Oh, I spoke to Phil on this. Why aren't we seeing any of that? It's only young teens, only minded to say, I've had conversations with him. And I'm glad that it didn't go anywhere else because that could have then continued to grooming. And what if those specific kids wanted to go and, you know, train, become a presenter? I just don't want this conversation to be swept under the rug. And I feel like it kind of has at this moment of time. Again, I haven't said anything derogatory about Philip. There's no need for me to do so. But I just think that these are the tactics that grown men or grown women can use when it comes to minors, um, you know, baseless, kind interactions with young minors that they don't know, that is very unnecessary, that is not needed. And then from there, there's levels and stages that you as a minor are so naive to. And you know, it's what happened to me more times in institutions that I've gone to to educate and learn. I've had people say X, Y, Z to me and that naivety can learn and continue the grooming. It can then turn to, you know, sexual abuse or it doesn't turn to that and it's just grooming until you are a later age and you can still be when you're legal of age, but still either or it's, it's all very different. And then that can hypersexualize you as an individual and then you want to escape stuff like that, like I did, and then I went into sex work to try and survive, and then the men that I met when it came to sex work wanted me to say awful stuff, bad slurs, offensive language, to fulfill their sick fantasies, and then your sexual abuse situation really changes your perception of what sex can be, and that you feel like you have to obey these people, you can't say no, you don't have any boundaries, you don't know what boundaries are, 
and your perception is completely, completely distorted based on grooming and sexual abuse and what has happened to you. So it's not about what has happened then, it affects you in every single stage of life. When you get older, it affects you in every capacity. You, you just find it hard to say the word no and people will be like, well, clearly, and it's like, but your brain is rewired based on grooming based on sexual abuse, it is biologically rewired and shaped differently to the point where you end up being in positions, especially as a sex worker when you get hypersexualized or just in the bedroom anyways, where you feel like you just can't say no, you don't know people can touch you and do whatever and you just have to accept it, it associates with your self-worth and value and you end up doing things for men that you should never be doing or for women that you should never be doing, but you put yourself in these predicaments because you end up trying to survive, you end up homeless because there aren't foundations or charities or anything that want to support young boys or young girls that go through it. So, you know, like I always refrain to myself at the end. I do keep um, re referring to it because I want to have that conversation. Um, as struggling as can be, I feel like it is good to um, use me as an example um, and I just uh, of how grooming can continue on throughout your life. It doesn't just it's not just a conversation, that's just how it starts. And then there's so many different levels to it. And then the after effects you deal with forever, whereas the men who groom you can go off and do it to, to somebody else and do it to this person and that person. And it's just very dangerous. So I just think that these conversations need to be had in some way for how it starts like this. And this is what Phil was doing with multiple people. And they found the perfect candidate, which was Matthew. And he was the perfect person because he was the one that he wanted to go into presenting, looked up to Phil, really wanted that friendship, really wanted that relation because evidently he would have defended him by now but they're not on good terms you got kicked out of the NTAs things went sour he tried to confront Holly about it and he just got pushed away completely and now because of all of that enthusiasm that he's had for presenting and because he was taking control from Philip and etc he can't go back into that ever again you can never go back into presenting he's working in a pub he doesn't know what else to do for his life um, in terms of going into that career and it's just really unfair and I have so much empathy and I feel for him because if it wasn't for these weird grown men his life would not have been messed up. If Matthew had hurt somebody else, continued on the cycle, you know, abused people, that's different. Then I don't have empathy for somebody. But if you haven't hurt somebody else or continued on the cycle, then I can't have that empathy for you. So I just think that when I speak on stuff like this, it, there's a larger conversation and there's a lot of people who do stuff like this. I didn't ever expect to become this spokesperson over the past couple of weeks. I know this has hit people in the right way and I'm glad that it has. I haven't spoken about this on TikTok, but I think that I will. I just have reservations to speak on TikTok because I feel like that app is ready to bite my head off. So to then speak on something triggering and then expect a negative reaction is just scary to me. So YouTube is where I'm just more open about stuff um, and where I'm just more comfortable. But yeah, let me know if you want me to speak more about this on TikTok and really just own this conversation, hone in on it when it comes to grooming and the sexual abuse of boys and what takes place and how scary it can really be. Woo, I turned this into a whole educated video. I try my best to explain it. Hopefully I did, I don't know. Let me know your thoughts are guys when it comes to this. So subscribe to the channel, click that button. It is daily and consistent content. It is difficult for me to speak on this. In the last couple of days, my mental health, health has been low. I just feel re-triggered again. I'm just like tired and exhausted over this conversation, but I just feel like we as people who've gone through it, if we can't teach the masses and who the hell's, who, who else can? Like, how can you speak on stuff when you haven't experienced it? That, should, that just comes with it, unfortunately, and it is a shame. Subscribe to the channel, click that button, guys. It's just one click, and I'll catch you guys soon for another review.